Hi everybody, it's Swank Ivy, and I'm back from Creating Change, which was the conference I just went to to talk about asexuality. This is put on by the National Gay and Lesbian Task Force, and it happens once a year. This year, in 2013, asexuality was represented on a panel and at a caucus for the first time and I got to be one of the people on this Asexual Voices panel. We had four different asexual perspectives represented, and Sarah Beth was the moderator, and the panel was me, Tristan, Rin, and M. We talked to a group of about 80 people, and afterwards we had a caucus of asexual and allies, that was attended by about 60 people to further discuss what we had gone into on the panel. I'm just going to share with you some of the highlights of the conference. I'll start by discussing what happened on the panel and in the caucus, and then I'll talk to you about the workshops that I attended the rest of the days of the conference, and I will tell you all about all the connections that I made and all the really fun things that I got to do. But first, I'd like to start by thanking the people who contributed to our campaign to raise money to send the panel to Atlanta. We had 52 people who contributed to the cause, and we more than met our goal. So that was really exciting, and I just want to thank everybody who helped us out. I know some of my YouTube subscribers were in that group. So I, I really can't be grateful enough for that. So first what happened in the asexuality panel is we came in armed with our asexual flag buttons and our conference IDs, and we got up in front of a group of people who were interested in listening to us talk about the experience of asexuality. Uh, Sarah Beth Brooks gave us a nice introduction, and uh, I started off the speeches where I talked about my own experiences. And then uh, we had Tristan, we had Rin, and we had M discuss all of their um, experiences, learning that they were asexual and how they negotiate relationships. And from that point on, uh, Sarah Beth took questions written down on note cards so that we could answer from the audience without them having to maybe be embarrassed to ask us. And it was uh, about 90 minutes long and uh, we got a lot of questions answered. We uh, helped a lot of people learn a lot of things, and it was a pretty good experience, um, very friendly. Everyone was very cool. And then afterwards, we all went upstairs and went to the Asexual and Allies Caucus, which was for people who wanted to discuss asexuality in a less formal atmosphere. Um, we had cake, and we broke up into four different groups so that we could discuss specific aspects of asexuality. One group discussed campus organizing and being inclusive of asexual individuals in LGBT or GSA groups. And another group discussed the intersection of asexuality and gender. We had another group discussing fiction and media representations of asexuality. And then the group that I ended up with was one that was just discussing asexual experiences in general. We had a lot of allies in my group, and we shared some experiences. We had a good time talking about our lives, ourselves, and our relationship with asexuality. I had some good individual conversations after that as well. So now I'll share some other highlights of the conference for me. The first day, which was Friday, was also the day that we had to give our panel talk, so overall we did not have any time to go to other people's workshops, which was a real shame because there were so many interesting things going on. But if you see this book, it's really huge, and it showed what was going on in each workshop session, and there were up to 25 things going on at the same time. You really had to pick and choose. So it was actually really flattering that 80 people decided that our workshop was the one that they wanted to go to. Um, Sarah Beth and I spent most of the first morning giving out pamphlets about asexuality to people who were sitting at 
uh, tables or people that we met to discuss the issues. Um, a lot of vendors and organizations that have some kind of connection to the GLBTQ community uh, would get a vendor table and give out information about their health services or their law services. And we were able to make some connections there, exchange business cards, and learn a lot from them as well as teach them about our community. That first day had a few highlights for me besides, of course, our panel. The first being that Sarah Beth and I ran into Mara Kiesling, who is the executive director for the National Center for Transgender Equality, and David J. looks up to her as kind of a mentor because she pretty much spearheaded a movement for the transgender community um, when there was no movement, pretty much like he's trying to do and has been pretty successful doing. So it was really cool to run into her and talk to her. But on top of that, Sarah Beth and Mara had a really good conversation about the Employee Non-Discrimination Act and how we're trying to figure out whether asexuality should be included in the write-up to encourage the uh, lawmakers to include sexual minorities and gender minorities in that language for non-discrimination. And they had a discussion about how asexuality might fit in and decided to go ahead and submit some information that would suggest asexuality should be included in that language. So that was a really fun and kind of stressful situation there, trying to, on the go, draw up this document to try to get them to consider including us, which everything worked out really well. Uh, we had pretty much everybody on the team was contributing to that paper while trying to go to this conference and uphold our other responsibilities. It was really exciting and I was really enjoyed being a part of it. I also got to briefly meet Dan Choi who was really important in LGBTQ rights because he protested Don't Ask Don't Tell in a really visible media way uh, by chaining himself to the White House fence in protest of the Don't Ask Don't Tell policy. And that was really cool to meet someone like him who stood up for what he believed in, and Sarah Beth introduced me to him. Um, so that was really cool. Sarah Beth and I also went to one of the really big plenary speeches on Friday and got to see Ray Carey speak, and we got all kinds of information about all the victories in the movement this year. And then the big surprise for me was getting to see that President Obama actually sent us a video to discuss how he was in support of the LGBT community. And that was just really shocking and very moving to get to see and get to be there for that. Once the second day of the conference came, we were through with most of our responsibilities and we were free to go to workshops. So M and Tristan and I spent a lot of the day together going to workshops. And the first one that we attended was called Establishing Inclusivity in Campus Organizing, and it was a pretty good presentation. I enjoyed uh, hearing about all the different um, aspects of people's identities that we have to consider when we're trying to form some kind of LGBT-friendly group, because there's a lot more than just sexual orientation that one has to consider. We discussed race and class, and we discussed all kinds of privilege-related things. So that was a nice uh, overall picture, and we really enjoyed also talking with the presenters afterwards. The second workshop that my group attended was entitled Community-Based Surveys, Collecting and Using Data to Secure Protections for LGBT People. Now, I'm not really much of a survey geek, but both of the people I was with had actually had experience crunching the numbers and administering asexuality-related surveys before, so they both wanted to see what it was all about, and I actually really enjoyed it, too. And they talked about how data is used, how surveys are distributed, and um, how you go about getting respondents, and it was all very eye-opening. And we had a good time hearing about how they thought that this could be applied to anybody who's trying to gather data on the LGBT community. 
And then for the last workshop that I ended up going to, I went with Tristan because M had to go to a different one. So we decided to go to one called The End of Romance, which we weren't sure whether that was going to be applicable to us or what, but we thought it would sure be interesting. And what's funny is half of our group was already in there, and David came in when it, after it had already started. But um, the presenters were discussing all kinds of non-traditional relationships, sometimes poly, sometimes BDSM relationships, and the concept of separating romance from other kinds of relationships and not upholding romance as like this pinnacle of what you're supposed to get from your relationships. And I thought that that was a really enlightening and a really cool way to look at things. So I think they probably have a lot in common with the asexual community and how we think about those things. So that was really refreshing to see. I went to part of the plenary session on Saturday, too, which the main speaker was Jose Antonio Vargas, and he did some discussion of immigration and undocumented people with an intersection with the LGBT community, and there was a lot of really moving stuff that he said. So we were just talking about all of the difficulties that a person can have if they're dealing with, on top of being gay, they're dealing with being undocumented. And so they actually had a panel up there too in the second part of it, and we enjoyed seeing what they presented. And then on Sunday there was just one workshop session, so we decided to sneak into uh, the I'm Online LGBT Identity Development and Social Media Context workshop. Um, Tristan and I missed the beginning, so we didn't really get a presentation of the different models that they were talking about, but we did get to have a short discussion with the other panel attendees, and, you know, it was a really good presentation of how uh, social media... Um, is a has made coming out a different experience and some other LGBT related things with regards to social media. Besides all the fun we had and all the learning we did, um, I also got some cool stuff to take home, all these buttons from various organizations and this cool bag that came with my registration. So besides all of those things, we got goodies to take home. We got all kinds of free stuff, great literature for various organizations, and nice messages like this. And actually, speaking of which, I would like to talk about the experience of going to the gender-neutral restrooms, where they had designated certain restrooms as any gender could use them, which was a wonderful thing for the conference organizers to consider, because even though I've never had to deal with the trouble of which bathroom to use. There are lots of people who have to make that decision every day of whether they're going to get yelled at or whether they're going to get beat up by going into a restroom just to use the facilities. So that was really cool, and I really enjoyed that. Of course, one of the highlights for me was getting to hang out with a bunch of other aces. I had never been in a room with that many other people who identified as asexual. And our contingent was seven people. We rented an apartment together, we cooked breakfast together, we hung out, we talked about things that were unrelated as well as things that were related. And we just had a great time getting to know one another, and it was a fabulous experience. On Saturday night we went out to dinner with a couple of other people who had joined up with us, and we hit a Thai restaurant, and the waiter had noticed that we were wearing conference badges and asked us about it, so I let him read my badge, and he looked at us and he said, Oh, so you're family, which was a really fun thing to be told, like a, an approval statement that, Oh, you're at a gay conference, isn't that wonderful? So he gave us free appetizers, and that was really sweet of him. We mostly spent Saturday night at the apartment just hanging out and decompressing, sharing some of our contacts, and telling stories, and eating candy necklaces, and uh, making little videos to share for later. And that was 
pretty much the wrap up that night. The next morning we just went to the conference and ended up kind of all split up and I had a somewhat early flight so I had to cut out before the big brunch at the conference. But overall it was a really fun experience and I think that we taught a lot of people about asexuality but we also learned a lot of things about how we can become more inclusive, how we can be better allies, how we can be better organizers and just get to see face to face who these people are that we're joining up with. It was a really fantastic experience and I'm really glad that I got to be a part of it.